Page 79, mid 1960s rock style. On page 78, they are introducing you to the idea of major and minor thirds. Wire well, head intervals. So hopefully you all know what a third is, an interval of a third. If not, please go back and review that stuff again. But simply put, an interval, I'm, I'm going to use white keys, an interval is, a third is just where the notes are one, two, three. You count them. One, two, three. It's a third. It's like there's one white key in between them. In the music, a third is easy to see because it's either the the notes are both on lines or they are both on spaces next to each other. And those are thirds. Well, there's different kinds of thirds. There's different kinds of intervals. And they're telling you about major and minor thirds. And there are other kinds of thirds besides this. So, but let's just focus on this. Major and minor thirds. Remember whole steps and half steps? Because I told you we'd use them eventually. <laughs> well, it's time. To me, the easiest way to remember a major third is just think of the key as C major because there's no sharps or flats in it. It's all white notes. And I just take the C and the E in C major. That's a major third. Well, a major third technically is a certain number of half steps. So I go one half step. Two half steps, three half steps, four half steps. So a major third is four half steps. I can go anywhere on the keyboard on any note I want, white or black, and as long as I go four half steps up or down, it's going to be a major third. For instance, if I go here and I go four half steps up, it's here. One, two, three, four. It's a major third. If I go four half steps down, whichever way down is, it's here. One, two, three, four. It's a major third. A minor third is just one less half step. Instead of four half steps, it's three half steps. So again on the C, if I go up three half steps, there's one, two, three, right there, it's a minor third. You see a minor third is just a half step less than a major third. So if that's a major third, go down, shrink it, by a half step and you get this. So either I go down here or I can go up here. Just shrink it by a half a step and you have a minor third. Why these are important, we'll talk about that later. Just just remember what major and minor thirds are for now. Okay, we're kind of building this over time. So it's important that you get this part or when we add more to this, yeah, I have no idea what we're talking about. It's like right now, if you have no idea what a, ma or a whole step and a half step is, you're probably lost already. And we did go over those. Go back and watch that video wherever they're introduced in the book. And that's page 78. Now on page 79, which has nothing whatsoever to do with any of this, they're going to talk about the rock style, as in rock and roll. It has a particular style to it, and you can read about it up there. What they're getting at is that we have natural accents in music, and in a 4-4 four, four time, the, natural, the first natural accent, the strongest, is always the first beat of any measure, no matter what the time signature is, the first beat. Well, in 4-4 four, four time, there's another natural accent on the third beat, so it's 1-2-3-4, 1-2-3-4. I'm exaggerating, but that's the idea. You feel them. They're natural. You don't make them happen. You just feel it. Well, in rock style, what they're getting at is... They're intentionally accenting the weak beats. I think they call them back beats or something. I call them weak beats because it's two and four. It, you normally would not accent those, but they're intentionally do that. So we get a one, two, three, four. One. It throws it off just a little bit. So in the example where they say 1950s, the classic rock style, you see in the right hand the accent, little accent sign 
underneath the right hand chord on beat two and on beat four. You see it on each one? So it's one and two and. And then when you get to the end, they, they're putting accents. Watch all those accents. And then at the very end, it's like accent every note, sort of. So it's, it's another form of syncopation. Whether, remember syncopation, I said you play a note when you don't expect to, or you don't play a note when you do expect to. Well, if we accent a note we don't expect to, it's just another way of syncopating it, sort of. And that's what this is. That's all this is. So as you go through this, the important thing is the accents in the right hand. In the mid-60s rock style, which we're going to do a play with me on that one, it's, it's two and four. And you have to make it happen because if you happen naturally, it'll be one and three. what you want to do, but we're intentionally switching it over so it's two and four. Yeah. So let's go through this mid-60s rock style if you have to, one hand at a time. Now the left hand, you just basically got this pattern going. And on the different chords, etc. I mean, you're using the primary chords whether you know it or not. The one chord, four chord, and then the five seven eventually, and then back to the one chord. Or, a, you get the idea, you use those chords. You, the five chord is the first measure of the last line, you, you have the G. Yeah, so this piece uses the one four and the five, it's not the five seven chord, it's the five chord here. Okay, that's fine, I don't care. The right hand's pretty straightforward, you just got these chords. The tricky part is the accent. accent. A little extra oomph by itself it's not bad it's when you put the left hand with it so let's do this really 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 slow and see if you can get the accents in and as you noticed I hope there's no pedal in this because we want this to bounce along so it's a 4-4 time I'm going to uh, give us four counts use the fingering they're showing it's fine it'll do Oh, right hand is here, left hand is here, here we go. One and two and ready and go and. One 